What's up, everybody? <clears throat> what is up, everybody? I want to give you some information about, I call it, hospital etiquette. These are situations that happen when you are a patient in the hospital. And I want to talk about one thing in um, particular, and that's the HIPAA, the HIPAA rules, the HIPAA laws. So when you when you come to the hospital, they're going to ask you as a patient, do you want to be under HIPAA, which is nobody will know that you're here. Um, no, no information to be shared. They won't have nobody can get your phone number. Nobody could be transferred to your room. None of that. They won't know what unit you on. They won't know no nursing station. None of that stuff. So when you are under HIPAA, you need to be mindful, you and your family, especially your family, need to be mindful that they cannot call a nursing station, they cannot call a telephone operators and ask for John Smith, if John Smith is under HIPAA. And if they do ask for John Smith, they're going to find out that John Smith isn't at the hospital, let's say a St. Francis hospital. John Smith is not at St. Francis Hospital. And that goes for any hospital, probably in the nation, but I'm going to stick to Connecticut. But probably in the nation, um, if you're under HIPAA, you are protected. Nobody will know that you're there. Nobody can ask for you. Nobody can have your phone number. I know some hospitals may have passwords um, to get you in, to get you connected. But those passwords, from what I remember or recall, is that you have to call that direct number. You can't call the main number of St. Francis Hospital and, oh, I got the password. That doesn't work. You need to have the number probably to the nursing station of where the, the loved one, the patient that you're looking for is. So if you got a password, you need to have a number, a direct number to call and not just the main number to whatever hospital it is. You need a direct number in a password, if y'all get into a password situation, um, to call. And that is for the protection of your loved one or wh whoever's in the hospital. Because most of the time when people are under HIPAA, something's wrong 90% of the time, in my opinion. Either you're in police custody, there's an investigation going on about a accident a car accident it could be a, a shooting it can be a stabbing it could be a fight you could have been drunk walking or whatever so until police finish their investigation they normally keep you under HIPAA so when you are in police care and custody you must contact the police department and this is the family you must contact the police department and get uh, escorted in um, by the police, they might question who you are. You might have to show them ID, not the hospital security and all these guys. Let's say you're in Hartford. Let's say you're at St. Francis from what I can remember. You're at St. Francis. You need to meet the police at the uh, hospital, show them your ID, show them how you're related to, let's say the shooting victim or whatever, how you're related to them or whatever. Then they'll escort you up to the unit probably and they will um, have you talk to the nurses and all that stuff so you can square up on what number you need to call, what the password may be or whatever. But that really doesn't have nothing to do with the hospital security. It's probably the police department. So if, if, you, if you know your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife or your nephew or your son or whatever is in the hospital, let's say because of a gunshot wound, do not get mad at anybody at the hospital because they're actually just protecting your loved one. And I say that because sometimes somebody may get shot. This probably back in history, this is why they probably put this into effect. Somebody get shot and they find out, oh, he's at St. Francis Hospital on the ninth floor. Um, he's still breathing or whatever. People used to go up to the hospital to finish somebody off. So that's why victims of crimes are normally uh, protected through the HIPAA uh, uh, rules and laws or whatever. 
So be respectful to the system. It's only for your loved one that's in the hospital's protection, um, for their safety. Uh, and then once everything, probably the investigation is cleared up or whatever, they might take them off the HIPAA uh, thing and phone calls can start happening. Open communication can start happening um, at that time. But sometimes sometime people could just go to the hospital. They ain't even got, I can go to the hospital today and when I check in, do the intake, uh, do you want people to know you? No, put me on the HIPAA. And it ain't no crime or nothing, but you just don't want nobody to know your business. A lot of people do that as well. But be mindful that my sisters, my brothers, my cousins, if they call looking for me, they will not be able to find me because I am under HIPAA. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's overreach because you got your grandmother calling. She nervous and, oh, I'm looking for my grandson. Oh, yeah, I heard he, he got the stomach flu or whatever. I hope he okay. Can you transfer me to where he at or whatever so I can talk to the nurse? And we'll be like, no, granny. No, granny. Your husband, uh, Kiwan, is not here. I, oh, I thought he was here because my daughter called and said, and we'll say, well, can't help you. We don't know. This is, I'm talking about the hospital employees. We don't know because we don't see him in our system or whatever. Grand. Oh, oh, okay. I'll find out what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, son. Thank you, junior. Or whatever they might call the, 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 the person talking to him or whatever. But anyway, yeah, so be careful. If you go on the HIPAA, people ain't going to know that you're there all the way down to your grandmother, your great grandmother, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your brother, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, all that stuff. They will not know. So be careful with putting yourself under HIPAA unless you unconscious gunshot victim where the police are involved. Police will automatically put you under HIPAA till they finish the investigation. Like I say, the family members may have to call up the, the the police department meet them at the hospital and show some ID just to uh, get clearance to uh, be with their loved one that may have been a victim of a crime. Also, anybody that has somebody that works in the hospital, when your kids are calling into the hospital, please, 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 please have your kids ask for you by name. Or if you're a patient in the hospital as well. Oh, I'm looking for my mom. I'm looking for my dad. I'm looking for my aunt. I'm looking for my cousin. We don't know who your aunt, your cousin is or whatever. So you need to start off. Hi, hello, how you doing? My name is so-and-so. Um, I'm trying to see if my aunt, uh, uh, Jackie Brown, is here in the hospital. Oh, Jackie Brown isn't here. You have a good day. Oh, Jackie Brown is here. She's on uh, 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 East 3 or whatever, something like that, or whatever the units may be called or whatever. So make sure you call and ask for the person. Don't ask for your uncle. Oh, I'm looking for my uncle. Okay. Who is your uncle? So let's skip that. Also, when you call and ask for your uncle, you need to know how to spell your uncle's name. If his name is Robert Brown, R-O-B-E-R-T-B-R-A-N-B-R-O-N-B-R-O-W-N. I never spelled Brown before. Um, so I spelled it, wrote it down, but I never had to say it. But anyway, example, um, make sure you know how to spell the people's name. And you know their name, you know their last name, and you know their first name. I know some Latino people tend to have hyphenated names, and it might be Torres, Figueroa, uh, Rodriguez, Diaz, or whatever. Make sure you find out which one is the first last name, and then the hyphen, and then the next last name, or whatever. So try to say it in order. Hopefully they write it in order or whatever. So that's very important too because that can become confusing and you might be saying the other last name. The name might be Carmen Rodriguez Diaz and you might be saying Carmen Diaz in a list in a system as Carmen Rodriguez. So be careful of that because we might get into, you know, your birth date. What is the birth date? What is their address and stuff like that? So now you might have to know more stuff or whatever. So 
come with the right name and the right spelling and the right title of the person. I'm looking for my mother. Her name is so-and-so. Don't just call and say, I'm looking for my mother. Okay. Um, also, like I said, the date of birth. Um, and that's about it. That's about it. But yeah, that HIPAA stuff, be careful with that. Be careful with the HIPAA stuff. And oh yeah, last thing, the hospital is open 24 hours. The emergency room is so most emergency rooms are so please when you call and please don't say is the hospital open i think that's kind of goofy but people do it and somebody got to answer that question that you may have asked so yes hospitals are open 24 hours and that is it for this hipaa hospital telephone etiquette privacy laws rules police custody um if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a share, uh, subscribe, tell your friends about it. I got more stuff coming through, but yeah, follow the rules of HIPAA. Um, I don't personally, I don't like HIPAA because most of the time people on the streets know about you anyway, especially if you did a crime. If you're a victim of a crime, it might be a little bit different. But if you just in the hospital, you know, most people got bedside phones. You can get the, the room number. You can get the phone number to the room. You can get the, the bed, which bed in it, because it'd be, be two people in a, a room. So bed one or bed two. You can get the nurse's station phone number. Um, and you got to write this stuff down and memorize it. And what's the nurse's station phone number so you can call them direct and get an update on your loved one. Um, be thorough and ask questions and people will answer most of the time but anyway i'm gonna end this video y'all take care hopefully this video helps somebody i am out of here peace